thank you, Sister Reagan, for invoking God's blessing on the proceedings. We'll now have a Bible lesson, and it's taken from Proverbs 4, 1 to 7. And we'll read together. Proverbs 4, 1 to 7. Let's read.
um, want to play our song where those who have to spend it right. And for those who didn't have to give right, I pray that you will open up ways and means that they'll be able to give on to you right. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to turn back over the service to our moderator this morning, Sister Ardeen, and she will come and read you this morning's announcement. Amen. You may take your seat. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Diane. I want to thank you and your group for that wonderful session. We're truly blessed. We also want to thank Brother Arthur on the guitar, Sister Kieran on the drums, and the technical team at the back. We are going to continue to bless you. Now for our announcements, the Christian Mission Headquarters announcement for a week commencing September the 20th, 2020. We are very conscious that our Heavenly Father has brought us to the kingdom for such a time as this. Let us continue to give him thanks for the services held in all our assemblies and remain fervent in prayer as we follow his leadership. Prayer and fasting will continue at home until further notice. Please be guided by the upcoming schedule for our Sunday morning Christian Mission Family International Online Worship Team broadcast on our Facebook page and your, on your YouTube, to YouTube channel. September the 20th, Struggle Christian Mission, 6 p.m. September 27th, Melvin Christian Mission, 8 a.m. September 27th, Mount Zion Tabernacle Annual Women's Day Service. Guest, speak, guest speaker will be Reverend Joe Ego, and that will be at 11 a.m. October the 4th, the, quarterly, the fourth quarterly service, live stream at 10.30 a.m. October the 11th, the 130th anniversary service, live stream at 10.30 a.m. Or, our final quarterly service will convene at the Gospel Tabernacle Sunday the 4th October at 10.30 a.m. Baptism takes place at Brandon's Beach on Saturday, October the 3rd at 4 p.m. Pastors and assistant pastors, please indicate the number of candidates being prepared for baptism. A special offering will be collected during the quarterly service in aid of the Hillby, Hillby Building Project. Our 130th anniversary service commences at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday, 11th of October, 2020. Continue fervent in prayer for the various ministry of the church internationally, sick and shut in, worldwide condition, families of the dead departed, and the salvation of the lost soul. Reverend Jordi, generous with the people. Now to our local announcement, announcement for Sunday the 20th of September 2020. A special welcome to everyone who is worshiping with us today. We are happy to see those students, parents, guardians, and teachers who have come to give thanks. We thank God. for protecting our Sunday school students during their long holiday. At the end of the service, special prayer will be said for them and their teacher. Continue to pray for our Sunday school students
students, the youth department, the ladies' ministry, the sign language, mentorship, and dance ministry. The senior members and those who are ill. Thank God for the funding is at home and feeling much better. Sister Gerken, same love and greetings to the church. Special thanks to the ladies' ministry for conducting the service today. May God richly bless their ministry. Now to the birthday greetings. Birthday greetings to Sister Heather and Sister Jane. Today, the 20th of September. <laughs> Carolyn Warren is on the 21st. Shanice Linton, the 22nd. Demario Sargent, Samaya Turney, and Joel Belgrove on the 23rd. We wish all of them a happy birthday and God continue blessings. The worship team will now come and sing the birthdays.
a morsel of bread in thy hand. Here ends no sound. And she said, As the Lord thy God live, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a crew. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast it said. But make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus which the word of God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the poon of oil fail, until that day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she, and he, and her household did eat many days, for the barrel of meat wasted not, neither did the crude of oil fail, according to the words of the Lord, which he spoke to Elijah. And it came to pass after these things, that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick, and his sickness was so sore, that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into the loft where he abode and had and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. Here ends that passage of scripture. We are going to read just three verses now of Exodus chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. And we should read. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they, for they will say, The Lord has not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thy hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. You may take your seats. We have just read three passages of scripture. And if I could give the sermonette a topic this morning, I would call it the honored gift. As we read about Dorcas in the first passage of scripture, we'll see that Dorcas, I might be a little bit simple this morning because we want the kids to really understand the essence of the message. We see Dorcas, the Bible didn't speak a whole lot about Dorcas, but what little we got, Dorcas was a disciple. And a disciple means that she is a follower of God. And because she's a follower of God, we would know because she's a disciple, she loved God with all her heart. And in loving God with all your heart, it means that that love will then be extended to those around you, your family members, your neighbors, your friends, those in your workplace, those in your congregation, that love will extend to others. And we see Dorcas didn't have a whole lot. The scripture never told us that Dorcas was a rich woman. It told us that Dorcas much with her time. For Dorcas had but a needle. I'm sure many of you cannot see my needle this morning. Dorcas had but a needle. And the ability that God had placed within her heart to be able to be a seamstress, what we would call a seamstress. Nowhere in the scriptures did it tell us she had a single machine. 
she had an overlock machine, she had any sort of machine, but because she sold for all the widows in the village and all the less fortunate in the village, we would know she must have had a needle on thread. And Dorcas used that needle and that thread to honor God, because whatever we do in this life, it starts with us honoring God. And Dorcas honored God with that needle and that thread. She blessed all the widows in her village. You could imagine being able to bless all the villagers that live around you in your neighborhood with my sewing, clothing from my hand. Well, Dorcas did it back in the day. She sold for everyone. And we see at the end of Dorcas' days, when it was time, Dorcas passed away. And because of Dorcas' generous generosity, and because of her effortless giving, because she gave without an effort, she didn't boast about it. There's no way in the passage that we see a boast of Dorcas. But her effortless giving, Dorcas, after she died, the villagers were wailing, they were crying. I want to say to you this morning that when your brother or sister do not understand the tears, tears is a language that only God understands. I want to say to you this morning that the villagers were in tears. They were in floods of tears because here it is, this generous woman that blessed all of us had passed away. And because of her generosity, God allowed Peter to be able to raise Dorcas from the dead. This morning, I'm going to ask you a few times, what do you have in your hand? Just think about it as I go along. What do you have in your hand? Can you sew? Can you bake cakes? Can you offer a kind word? Can you pray for a brother or sister? What do you have in your hand that you can use this morning to honor God and to bless a brother or sister? As we go on, we see another passage of scripture where the widow woman, she had only enough. Only enough she had. She had but just a little flour and a little bit of oil. I want to say to you this morning that little is much when God is in it. That widow woman had just enough to make one loaf of bread. And when she came in contact with a man of God, her whole scenario changed. Sometimes we have things in our possession and it is only enough for you and your household. But if we would just bless another, God would bless us. God would bless us in remarkable ways. And as this woman listened to the man of God, and she made the bread and she gave it to Elijah. When you think she was only making one bread for her and her son, but here it is, she made one for Elijah, and she had bread for her, her son, and it told me in the scriptures that she had for her an entire household, which means she had more than one, she had more than enough. I want to say to you this morning that little is much when God is in it. We have just been faced with a situation of COVID-19, and we were clotting for eight weeks, and so many of us did not have morning, as I was in my house locked up for four weeks, constantly there were knocks on my door. And when I heard a knock and I looked, there was a package somebody dropped off. By the time the day is done, three or four packages came. I want to say to you today, I didn't keep it all for myself. Whatever was in those packages, I packaged it again in several other packages. And I went to my neighbor's house and I did the same thing I knocked. And I gave them a packet. I want to say that during the eight weeks of COVID-19, I didn't want to go to the supermarket. I had a friend who said to me one day, I need an older lady, I need some stuff from the supermarket. She gave me a list of about 12 things. And in giving me the list, I said to her, but my kids told me I'm not supposed to leave the house. I'm not supposed to go to the supermarket. 
but I studied that she needed this stuff. And this is not in a boastful way this morning, but I opened my pantry, and when I opened the pantry, I started to go down the list. And she wanted 12 items between the pantry and the freezer. And I got the 12 items. I buy it and I took it to her house. When I got there, she said, how much do I have for you? I said, you have nothing for me, because I took it from my pantry. She said, Lord, have mercy. I want to say to you this morning that little is much when God is in it. Everybody just use what we have in our hands to bless a brother or sister. God will honor it. He honored Dorcas. He honored the widow woman when her son died. He allowed Elijah to be able to lie down on her son three times and his soul came back into him. This morning I am saying that every but just use what we have in our hands and have a heart of love for every brother and every sister, whether it is a member of our congregation or not, that does not matter in the eyes of God. We are all his children and he loves all of us just the same. I say to you this morning, we need to open up our hearts and we need, if you love God, he asks us to love our neighbors as ourselves. This morning I am asking you, to love each other and use what you have in your hand. I will continue. And then when I look at Exodus chapter 4, verse 1 to 3, I see Moses. Moses was a man. Moses was a man that spent too much. He killed, he murdered, he was committed murder, and he spent 40 years in the backside of the desert. But when Moses came in contact with the man Jesus, everything changed. From the instant of the burning bush, everything about Moses changed. I want to say this morning that even when Moses was about to speak to the people that he had an encounter with God, and Moses was fearful that they wouldn't believe what he was saying. And God said to Moses, you want them to understand what you're saying? But if you want them to understand what you are saying, I ask you to use what is in your hand. And Moses had but a mere rod. It may not look like mine this morning, but Moses had a rod. And God said to Moses, drop it. And when he dropped it, it went into a serpent. When the people would have seen the rod going into a serpent, they would have been convinced that Moses came in contact with somebody greater than you and I. Even when Moses was faced with the Red Sea, and the enemy was behind him, he became fearful. I'm sure he, like most of them, were thinking, why did God bring us up here? Because the sea is there, we can't run, and the army is behind us, we are hemmed in. What do you have in your hand? It's a rod, use it. And when Moses pointed forth his rod, the sea parted, and it didn't part, and they went over on wet soil or wet sand. They went over on dry ground. Do you see how awesome my God is this morning? My God is an awesome, awesome God. I say to you today, use what you have in your hands, that you might be able to bless the brother
they are probably going to another one. Parents, I implore you this morning to seek God. I implore you to seek God on the behalf of your children. Job was a man after God's own heart, and Job didn't take anything for granted. Job seek God on the behalf of his children continually. Even when they weren't doing things that were pleasing in the eyes of God, Job went in to seek God every day. He bruised his knee a little bit on the behalf of his children, and God honored it. Because after they were destroyed, God replenished Job. He gave him more than he had in every instant. This morning I say to you, we as parents, we need to seek God on the behalf of these children for this journey that they are going to take. Parents, moms and dads that are here this morning, I ask you to use what you have in your hand. That God, you can honor God and you can bless someone with. Are you willing to honor God with your sacrifice of your life this morning? Are you willing to honor God with your time, with your effort, with your talent? Some of us are so talented and we use it on the crop over scene. We use it to sing Calypso. Are you willing to honor God this morning with that beautiful voice? Are you willing to honor God with the fact that God has placed an intercessory seed into your stomach? Are you willing to honor God and be an intercessor this morning? Are you willing to honor God to be a darkest this morning and make a garment for somebody that's less fortunate? Are you willing to make a cake for somebody this morning that is less fortunate? Whatever you have in your hand, I encourage you to use it. As for you students, you cannot take your brother with you. You cannot take your sister with you. You cannot take mommy and daddy. You are transitioning from one section of your life to another. And this is the most important stage of your life. Whatever you do in secondary school will reflect what you do when you get old like me. I will say to you, mommy can't go with you, daddy can't go with you. But I know somebody who can go with you this morning. And his name is Jesus. You, all you've got to do is say, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say, yes, Lord. you today to use what you have in your hand and God has brought you 
you this far and he is able to take you further. There is a song that came to me when I was preparing this sermon and it said, I must have the Savior with me for I dare not walk alone. I must feel his presence near me and his arms around me too. Then my soul shall fear no ill. Let him lead me where he will, for I will go without a murmur, and his footsteps follow still. Take God with you, wherever you go. Take God with you. Make him the center of your life, and God will direct your path. I pray that God bless each and every one of you. I pray that this little sermonette that God has given me would have blessed some soul this morning. And I encourage you again to use whatever you have in your hand. May it be a few lines in the yard. Make a glass of lemonade. Offer the man next door. He's working in the sun. Offer him a glass of lemonade. Offer him a sandwich. Whatever you have. And I assure you that you will never want for anything. May God continue to bless all of you. Take thanks in Jesus' name.
have the technical team at the back. This morning, I feel blessed and I feel honored. And you know why I am so blessed and so honored? When I saw these lovely students returning. Glory to God. Let's give God thanks. Let's give God praise. Returning to give thanks to God who was with them when they assembled here for the prayers of blessings. And after the praise of blessings, God took them to their respective examination centers. And after a few weeks, they were graced with some wonderful, wonderful results. And they are not only thankful that they have been successful, but they want God to know that they are thankful. So here they are. Please stand, students. Give them a round of applause. And uh, if there is someone that deserves a lovely round students who are writing the common entrance examination. And we would have extended invitations to the schools in the parish of St. Philip. And uh, we had representation from various schools. And of course, some schools did not participate because they were attending services at other churches. But for the past few years, Mrs. Spears and another teacher or a few other teachers from St. Catherine. Whenever these services were mentioned that they would be convening, they took the time, especially Mrs. Spears, to bring their students to the services. And when you know all that transpired because of the delay of the examination, and when we were given the notice, at late notice, Mrs. Spears said, we will try to be there. And I want to assure you, Mrs. Spears didn't come by herself, but she used her transportation, and she brought her students from St. Catherine. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? And when the results came back, and I asked Mrs. Spears, I wanted to make sure I got it right. I don't know if those at the back can find it on the screen. If they can't find it, it's okay. Mrs. Spears sent me the results of the students at the St. Catherine School. And I want to tell you that God honored their prayers. God honored Mrs. Spears' hard work. She is a dedicated, devoted, hardworking teacher. I can tell you that you may say, but Pastor, who give me that opportunity? I know, I know, I know. And the children did exceptionally well. I don't want to call them names now, but their results were from the highest schools. We know of in Barbados, Arson College, right down. And they did exceptionally well. Give them another round. Gathering personally because you may not see me for a little while unless you decide to come back and pay us a visit. But I want to say to you today that the words of advice that our dear ladies, President Sister Delois shared with you this morning will take you from first form to fifth form to tertiary institution to university. Use what you have. Remember your mommy, your daddy, your big brother, your teachers at primary cannot go with you, but the King of Kings. And the Lord of Lords will go with you. And another thing, don't let anybody tell you that you can achieve. You can achieve. You know that 
Bobby. service 
everyone present here. And as a servant of the Lord was ministering, I smile because God is such an awesome God. I don't call names all the time. But I want to say to that lovely, beautiful sister who shared what she had with others, may God bless you. You know who you are. We know who you are. And God bless you. Put your hands together. And it's only not one sister, and not one sister. There's several sisters and brothers in this church who have been giving and giving and will continue to give. May God bless all of you. Birthday persons that are celebrating, you know because of the protocol, we are no longer able to invite you to come up here and hug you and kiss you and let you know how much we appreciate you. But from here, I want to say happy birthday today, the person that says I had a dress up today, amen. So today is not here, but we wish her happy birthday today as well. And all the others who will be celebrating birthdays during this week, I wish you a happy birthday and God's blessings. And we know our usual way, our face, not sometimes Facebook, sometimes WhatsApp. We use the social media to pass on greetings. So may God bless all of you today. I do not want to exempt or revoke anybody. So for everyone, Sister Norma down in the back, I'm always glad to see you. When I told her about the service, she said, I will be there. And thank God she is here. There's a Kobe is here as well too. To God be the glory, to God be the praise. So to one and to all, may God bless you. May God let his face shine and let the light of his countenance shine upon you and grant you peace. And thanks for cooperating and being here for this lovely nine o'clock service. And as I conclude, it will be remiss of me not to say a special thank you and acknowledge a special friend of mine. I will just call the first name because there are too many other names for me to remember. I will just ask my dear friend and colleague, Patsy. Patsy Clark Pudding. Think about it right, please stand. I want to let you know that this wonderful colleague of mine, she was the first person, and I say that you will be tired of hearing it, but again, I like to give respect where respect is due. She was the first person who extended an invitation to the Ennis family from Riverland when we convened our first Thanksgiving, our first service of blessing 10 years ago. She was the one, at that time we were together teaching, but I have retired now. I extended an invitation to her. She took it to her and she says that I met and I went to the Elise Primary School. And from the Elise Primary School, uh, Moesha, get ready, Miss Moesha. From the, get that document ready, from the Elise Primary School. Get the document ready, please. From the Elise Primary School, she was able to get some students, including her relatives. Moesha is one of her relatives. And from then until now, the and his family has joined the, the family here at the Strodan Christian Nation Church. From that service of blessing until this morning, and the numbers are increasing all the time. It started with Moesha and Deshaun, and then it came on to his sister and his sister, and Agnella, and then Maria, and the family are joining. So Sister Patsy, you know how much I appreciate you. I'm no longer there at Parkinson to be with you, but my prayers are with you. And I respect you and I admire you that at the beginning of every school year, you know the importance of prayer. And I want to let you know that God is blessing this dear, wonderful young lady. And she keeps me informed with her progress. And at this time, on behalf of the church, I want to pass on congratulations to you. Because like Sister Cheryl, you are furthering your education. You're going on to do that associate degree at the Barbados Community College. So, degree, yes, that degree, yes. That God degree. 
Yes, she was going on to do her degree at the BCC Tech Talk, Home Economics, that you go to subjects, whatever. <laughs> whatever it is, I want us to take this up. Let's congratulate her a real success. And as I say to you, as I say to Mrs. Spears, the same blessings I pronounce on Mrs. Spears, I pronounce those blessings on you, that you will be successful and you are going to be able to come back here God's spilling. And like Hannah of old, you're going to say, this is what I ask the Lord for. Um, I wish you standing behind me. Well, this is not the lady standing behind me. Ten years ago, she was one of the first persons that came to the service of blessings. After leaving her primary school at Bailey's, she graduated to the law school. After graduating from the law school, she furthered her tertiary education at the University of the West Indies. And I was so happy a few weeks or months ago when she reported to me, Pastor, I have good news for you. I have been successful at the University of the West Indies, and I have graduated with upper second class honors. Here in my hand is the document.
that we can be gathered this morning with these children. Oh, you may be seated for a minute. I'm sure that some of you are like me. You want to know those children that are here, and you want to know which school they're going to. So I have a list of the children who will have come last time. And if I call your name and you are here, I'm just asking you to stand and quickly say which school you're going to. Zachary Ali. St. Michael's School. Amen. Roshan Mason, you may say. St. George Secular. Kendo, Kendo Sian, Asian Hindu. Sian. No, he's not here. Okay. PJ Innes, or KJ Innes. Fears. 
but we trust you, Lord. We believe in you, Lord. We've proven you in the past, Lord. And we we know, Lord, that what you have promised to do, you will do it. So as we lift these children up before you, as the song says, come and lay them on the altar one more time. This morning, Lord, we are laying them in the altar before you, Lord. And as you bless the children in days of old, we ask you, Lord, that you will bless each and every child this morning, Lord. Place your protection around them, Lord. Father, we ask you, Lord, that you would remember
thank you, Sister Hinch. We will now have the vote of thanks by Sister Nathalie.
still do that. She said, which I think is our focus, little is much when God is in it. So bless one another. We are really blessed in remarkable ways. She also gave a word of advice to parents and guardians to seek God, but not only seek him for yourself, but also for your children. Because as Sister Yuri says, pray, we know there are a lot of things out there that can harm the children. And the devil is getting busier and busier by the day. And we must always come to God in prayer for our children. Teach them how to come to pray for themselves. Because a little word, God understands. Your laugh, he understands. Your tears, he understands. There's nothing that he does not understand. So don't think you're too young to start a prayer. You can pray about your bed laid down. You can pray when you're in, in your school, on the bus, no matter where you are, you can say something and he will understand. I also want to say thank to Sister Farley for the special prayer for the children and the teachers. Sister Uris, for your closing prayer. We also want to thank you, each and every single person here this morning. If you were not here, we would have still had our service. But it is better. The Lord likes to see his people come out, fellowship, and worship and praise him. So we want to thank each and every single person here. So please give yourselves a round of applause. We want to say thank you to the moderator, Sister Arlene. You're always willing and able to thank you on behalf of the church. Sister Wade, you did the opening prayer. So I said I would thank you. So thank you for your opening prayer. Now I hope I didn't forget anyone, but if I did, it's not intentional. As I said, thank you one and everyone. And I want to say thank you for just coming and choosing to come to Strala Christian Mission to worship, praise, and say thanks to God. You could have gone to any other church. And we would have been glad that you went to church, but we're even more appreciative that you came to Strala Christian Mission. So that is the vote of thanks from me. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Sister Natalie. Please stand. Name the race. That's the end of our service. Thank you for coming. Enjoy the balance of your day. Um, I want to remind the students that you presented with your gift as an exit the church. Thank you, Watson.
Yeah, right, right, right. This is a thousand.